Hello and welcome to the Joe Martin Show. Today I'm here at Creative Cape Studios. So can you give me a background of like how all of this started? Because like it's like for the people, I mean, people can't really see here, but like it's it's amazing studio. Like it's it's really nice. Thank you. I'm used to like bedrooms and like <laughs> garages. Yeah. Um. It started like, let's see. Around like if I go really really far back, it yeah. started. Like on a Hewlett Packard computer, mm. which is like <laughs> really dating myself, but <laughs> basically just a home computer. And I found a little software with a record button on it. Fascinated with that, like holding up the guitar to the like the little lip lav mic that mm -hmm. computers used to come with. And then, um, let's see, around like 2009 is when interfaces started like hitting the market. Yeah, or a little before then maybe. And uh, like for a birthday, I, I got a, it was a Presonus fire, fire box or something like that. Yeah. And uh, it had like eight inputs <coughs> on it. I thought like, holy shit, I'm going to like fucking go crazy. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, and then like, it was like a huge humbling experience. Like, you know, I think everybody has had this moment where they, they record something, they hit playback, and they're like, I'm a fucking genius. Like, yeah. sorry, I don't know if it's okay to cuss. But <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, you know, like, this is sonic perfection. And then, like, you you put on, like, one of your favorite songs or something, you just get yeah, hit in the nuts immediately. Uh, I suck. And then, you know, there's this, like, spiral, a couple mm -hmm. of things that happen afterwards. Um, you start really doubting yourself and whatnot. And... Some people stop there, and then some people are just like, going, they, that's like what really starts the whole, like yeah, the people who push through that phase, they're the ones who usually make it. Cause again, there's like I forgot, I forgot what it was called where there's a beginning phase where like everything's going really quick, you're learning a lot of stuff, and then eventually you plateau, and like if you give up during that plateau, like that, I mean that's over for you. But like if you push through it and you, you again you start rising in terms of your skills and talents. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. Then cutting, I guess, fast forward, mm -hmm. there was that whole process. And around like 2010, 2011, around there is when I started like recording out of here. And uh, it looked a bit different than it did now. It was mm -hmm. like, because these are like office spaces. Yeah. Um, there was no remodel or anything. And uh, yeah, that's... That's kind of the quick. <laughs> yeah, how I ended up here. Just for just like so you can like clarify like that. I mean the the area print here is like nice. Like the other there's an outside area and there's a recording area, the office, and like that over there is a bunch of instruments. And I'm like, damn, this like this this seems fun, because I mean I remember some of the times back then in high school when I was in marching band where you have instruments just lying down everywhere and you can just mess around with everything, and just have fun. And, and I like I like this area. It looks nice. Cool. Thank you. So um um basically like, in terms of what was that noise? I think it was the AC. Oh okay, just make sure I'm like oh shit. <laughs> Um, how did you start like getting bands into the studio? Because I mean, when you start off, I mean you're you're basically an, like a no, you're not or you're, or you're nobody basically. Yeah. But like, how did you get like that first band, and then how did you get the ball rolling with uh, getting different musicians? Because I mean, you had done quite a bit of projects. I'm I'm still trying to get bands. To <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you have some pretty big hits right now. I mean, like pretty big bands that are torn out right now. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I've I've been really lucky. Mm -hmm. really lucky to to i'm so grateful to the bands out there that have taken a chance mm -hmm. um because it's at the end of the day we're just trying to do something awesome like in our yeah. area like when i have a band come in here i really make it a point to understand their vision like do my do the best i can to like get in their headspace like what yeah. is it you want to do and what is like best outcome if everything can go your way and then try to like see it through mm -hmm. till the end like and sometimes that could lead to like we were talking a little earlier about being uncomfortable and how sometimes being in a slightly uncomfortable area yields like better art <coughs> yeah and sometimes that means you know kind of like having to speak up or like not necessarily like letting just anything fly like you know, you you kind of have to filter. There, the, there has to be dis disagreements eventually, like yeah, and com compromise. You know, yeah, like a, good art comes from compromise, a lot, 
often. In terms of like, how did you get like the first band? Like, how did you tell them like, hey, like I can do this for you? Like, how did that happen? Because like the literal, yeah, the literal like the first. Because I mean, that's what, that's what gets me curious. Like, I mean, I barely started this podcast for like for like in two months. Two months ago, I barely started. Mm-hmm. So like, getting that first person like, hey, do you want like I can do this for you? Like, yeah, how was that? Like, yeah, I think well, what what definitely helped was playing in bands. Okay, yeah. So you do have a history playing with uh, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. I started playing drums when I was 11, and then, like, I think around 15 or 16, I was, like, in a band called White Zebra. Mm -hmm. And the music that we put out had, like, not a huge following or anything, but Mm -hmm. enough for people to kind of be like, hey, they sound cool, or I like what they're doing. And I think that kind of, even though I didn't have a whole lot of experience with recording, it was kind of like, well, at least I feel he has interesting tastes. Yeah. And, um, like getting that interface when I was young helped a bunch too, because it was like, well, I have a couple yeah. of microphones and inputs and we can do something cool, you know? Uh, but it was, it was probably like similar to what you do, like, mm-hmm. you know, writing a message and kind of like, Hey, I have this podcast yeah. and would you like to? And it was the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Out of curiosity, like, um, do you ever cringe at the stuff you'd meet in the beginning? Oh, hell yes. I recently, I won't say the name, but I recently found an the, like the first album I did on Spotify, yeah. like it got uploaded to Spotify. I don't know how <laughs> I will I will track down the person and ask them to take it down. <laughs> take it down because <laughs> it's rough. It's no, so yeah, I rough. get you. Because I mean, like this, this is actually like for, for the people who actually like know me, like be, before the podcast, like this is like my third podcast, and it so happened that I found into like one of my hard drives, like all the old recordings I need to do, and I'm like, mm, like <laughs> I'm glad this is not on YouTube anymore. Because I mean, <laughs> we were high schoolers and like. Obviously, you're not gonna have the best conversations as high, teenagers, yeah. and then uh, we w- we would record the podcast, well, quote unquote podcast with uh, just like a regular Toshiba laptop with a uh, with the webcam using the microphone from the laptop, nice. the built-in laptop. So everything was just awful. The rooms were untreated, so you hear like a bunch of echo. <laughs> then there was seven of us on screen. I mean, it was it was awful. And I, I like you know what? I'm glad this this is not online, so I should be fine. And, like, that makes me concerned about kids nowadays where, like, everybody has smartphones now. Mm-hmm. Like, when I grew up in high school, like, Facebook was barely getting popular, like, around my freshman or sophomore year. So, I- iPhones and Android didn't exist for, like, 2009. So, like, that was kind of, like, in between middle school and high school. Mm-hmm. So, like, you don't have a long history of stuff existing online, but now kids do have that, like, that concern. So, I'm like, man. Yeah. Like, they're going to they're gonna have to worry about a, a lot more cringe than we have. It's true. It's true. Like, if... Sometimes posting something like in a few hours, I look at it and I'm like cringe. Like yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, what, I, I mean, mean, your entire childhood just on online. Yeah, for real. But going back to what you're saying about like listening to the early ones, like yeah, I'm pretty sure a part of you kind of like, I don't know. It's kind of cool to have like really, really, or maybe more time needs to go by mm-hmm. until like you listen to it and you're like, oh, this is a jam. Like <laughs> look how like green I was. You're like yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's always a nostalgia where like sometimes friends come and go. So like, so I have friends that are like no longer with me anymore. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like, there's kind of like the nostalgic factor that you always enjoy. But then like, I'm like, no, I would not want this online. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, well, I share that about yeah, that I mean, first it's, album. It's big time. I got. <laughs> so um, how did well for me out of curiosity because I mean it took a while for me to like build up all this equipment. How long did it take you to get, like, everything? I'm, I'm, I'm curious because, I mean, like, this must have taken years and years. Like, like this is really nice stuff here. Thank you. Yeah, it's, um, it literally, like, is just, like, things I've picked up, like, over, over time. Like, e- every piece here has been kind of, like, uh, what do you call it? It w- there was never like a bulk like I want to start a studio yeah a loan of twenty grand let me buy a shitload of yeah equipment. cause when people look look at this like situ- like even with my situation is like how did you afford all of this I'm like it takes it takes a couple of yeah it took me years I'm saving up for the lighting I'm saving up for cameras I'm saving yeah. up for a second camera I'm saving you know like I definitely that's that that's been the way it happens mm-hmm. you know kind of like a drum set and like some of this equipment here I've yeah like I've had since. Like, my favorite drum set is the one I got when I started when I was 11 mm-hmm. um, for a birthday. Yeah. So, yeah, it's that's kind of been the way the acquisition has happened. Like, this this console comes from a friend in... in uh, his studio is in the Edinburgh area called mm-hmm. uh, Casa Panchita, and his name is Charlie Vela. And uh, 
he he used to be in a studio in in I want to say it was in Edinburgh called uh, Sound of Rain. Mm-hmm. And it was an amazing studio, like super amazing. How does all of this work? Like, I use a new thing <laughs> and I'm like, what the, what's all of this? Well, you could think like you have an interface or like a mixer. Yeah. Or, it's like literally that. It's like that. every strip here is just like one microphone input. Oh, okay. But like they work in rows and it's like input volume, like the gain. And then there's like a EQ section to kind of fine tune things. Yeah, it's, and, it's really nice. Yeah, it's it looks it looks intimidating. It looks intimidating. Because <laughs> when I first but, came in, I'm like, "What?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's fairly simple. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, equipment. Equipment. How did you get into like the whole making a studio? Actually, get into like audio production also. Like, what made you go from a band and then just jump into just audio production? Yeah, I think behind it, there's there. It's gonna sound like crazy, but there's no. The there has to be like uh, a, I love crazy. <laughs> uh, I think obsessive personalities are kind of the ones that are more inclined to like studio work because mm-hmm. a piece of you has to be really like. But how? But how? Like yeah, it's like the records you love set a benchmark sonically in your mind. It's like imprinted. Like what good is you know those artists have defined and the engineers behind those albums have defined what good is and. The ones that get the bug are the ones that like are just like what's the word like just dead set on figuring it out like it's like this puzzle that you're just like wrapping yeah. your brain and it's like why can't what i do sound as good as that <laughs> so that it it that's kind of like the drive that that fuels you mm-hmm. but um yeah it's I, I if there's anybody listening that is curious about starting i would say like don't like find something else <laughs> find something else because like at least for me it's been like a really long process that mm-hmm. i'm so i love and i'm so grateful for but yeah like, it's like man i could like i could have like bought a camera and just done photo shoots and made like yeah <laughs> a really good living it seems a lot of people are doing well but but at, no at the end of the day like you you love it you mm-hmm. you, ha- you have to love what you do oh yeah like, you have to and i kind of wanted I, yeah. I wanted to learn about audio production but i'm like i see like so much stuff that goes into it i'm like oh my god like how can i split my time between booking people doing going to re- doing the recordings working with everybody's schedule doing the video part the lighting and then like audio production itself because i mean those are all different little jobs i'm like yeah like how did you like how do you learn what a good sound is like that's what i'm getting curious about like how do you yeah how do you how do you learn that like that's such a good question i've i've recently thought of thought about that exactly mm-hmm. like if somebody's starting like how do they come to to like realize like what yeah. a good sound is it's i think it's a result of a lot of personal trial and error mm-hmm. um and I'm not sure if photography works this way or video editing, but like when you're mixing, often you need a reference. Like yeah. You need to grab a song as a reference. And often you ask the band, like, what are bands you're into? Or songs that you feel like, if if I could, if my mix could sound like theirs. Perfect, know, yeah. Yeah, perfect, on the money. And you kind of use that as like the, if you're painting, you, you keep on looking at the target and you're like oh okay their blues are leaning more this way so let me Mm -hmm. adjust my blues and that eventually will set set it straight in your mind what what a good sound is yeah and yeah that's curious because um like i noticed that with like creatives a lot where when you're first starting off you're kind of trying to like emulate the people who inspire you Mm -hmm. and then you go through a process where you like you start making like you start like experimenting through that like with your own taste and then eventually you come up with your own your own like vision of things mm-hmm. like your own your own style basically in terms of that who inspires you in terms of audio production like oh that's a great question cuz like in terms of like regular people like like that don't know that much like the the big one is that Quincy Jones like that's the one everybody yeah. knows like yeah but like who, yeah who like who inspires you like who do you try, like look up to yeah dang yeah there's a there's a there's a couple there's uh, an engineer named Ken Andrews mm-hmm. who played in a band called Failure in the 90s and they did some amazing music. Often some of my favorite mixers and recording engineers used to be in bands. Like yeah. That seems like the commonality. It's rare that somebody just starts mixing just mixing yeah. without experience with an instrument or of some sort. And um, 
there's another engineer named Sam Pura who's done albums for bands like Basement, sort of like the grungier stuff. And that's yeah. not all he's good at. Like, but <coughs> um, Eric Valentine, he's he's done like Queens of Stone Age, um, Smash Mouth, mm-hmm. uh, kind of a weird, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you call it? Name drop, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I was thinking about that recently, and there's definitely something very, like, I find, like, in the music I like, it's or the mixes I like, it's, yeah. it's rare that it's, like, oh, it's because they EQ'd it so clean. Some of it, it's, that's not the case. Like, it's it's kind of on the dirty side, but they have a way of, like, mm, striking like getting an emotional response through their dynamic processing Mm. the compression that they're doing the attack and release times are pulsating in a way that is just can you explain what that is because like yeah (laughs) yeah that's like like, a loaded (laughs) yeah because that was that was gonna be my follow-up question like what what about them that you enjoy which you're answering but like can you explain what all of that is like some people don't know what that is no definitely so like like the short of it is that like to use compression mm-hmm. on an audio signal is to level it because when you speak rarely does anybody speak in the same volume like, yeah there's uh, different like dynamics and so like you try right. to basically like is it, that's when you try to like get the quiet parts quiet parts louder or whatever and exactly like, yeah basically yeah like, yeah okay. so that it's like it's easier to digest a lot of sounds like kick drum snare drum bass vocal guitars guitars yeah. like and if they're all varying in volume a lot it's hard to concentrate it's mm. like I want to like your song, but like a lot of information is hitting my ears, and it's hard enough to decode like one voice coming at me. Yeah, sometimes multiple voices, another. Yeah, and yeah, so like if you're ever in a restaurant that has like horrible acoustics and you you're hearing like yeah. conversations, it's like you're in front of me, but I can't understand you. Like that's what it. That's what the experience is like without mm. compression and that sort of dynamic processing. But, um, so the the mixing engineers that I enjoy have like a really unique way of doing it. And and, like a really, um, I don't know. It's like their compression approach is very much in line with the emotional component underneath Mm. the song. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what is intense as far as maybe like lyrics or chord progression. Mm -hmm. Also, the the pumping effects of the compression are in line with the emotional component yeah. of the chord progression or the lyrics or the like yeah they're in alignment with each other <laughs> no, <I get> you. <laughs> i'm sorry that's yeah, a, such an intense way to put yeah, it yeah, but. No, your energy, but i know what you mean like <laughs> yeah i kind of understand what you mean because i have like best around with audio so i'm like i kind of get what you mean but i'm like hmm. well okay i'll try this analogy <laughs> i hope it works but like it would be like a painter that's about to paint like say say like what they're painting is like a very intense thing yeah like somebody like with a spear in their hand like jabbing somebody in the ribs right mm-hmm. and then they decide to use the most vivid colors like just okay. colors that grab you you're trying, so, to, you're trying to match the sound with okay okay get you right like yeah. so it's an intense intense image and then intense colors and so yeah. it's like an alignment with each other okay I get that's you. kind of what it's like yeah that right? works uh, <laughs> yeah because <laughs> i'm like wait what is he saying uh, yeah, yeah. No, but I know, the, that, that analogy like, that was perfect honestly i think cool that, that gives like the average person like okay this is what this is what they're, what they're talking about yeah um yeah. what do, what do you consider like the the future of all of this because we did talk about a little bit about age and I don't, i'm not sure if you want to get into that but like for me it was like um because i talked with a couple of other people like after the podcast you know like older guys i'm like how do you deal with uh re- reaching your 30s like i mean that's yeah, that's when everybody's like, "Oh shoot!" Because most of the like, most of the bands are like, young, you know, they're either yeah. eighteen or like twenty five, and we're close to like reaching thirty. So I'm like, "Okay, how do you like handle that?" Yeah, yeah. Well, like I mentioned earlier, you you want to be in a good place. Like mm-hmm. h- how your thirties feel depends so much on how you feel. I think based off your your twenties, yeah, okay. like you know, as you're getting closer to, like how much maturity has naturally set in mm-hmm. through experiences, like. Because you could tell somebody their whole life, like, um, don't do this or, yeah. like, be on top of this. And if they themselves are not wanting to be on top of it, then it's just... 
So, sometimes you need to sometimes you need to learn the hard way like yeah very like, I know much. it sounds the bad but like some people like need to get burned to learn understand that things are hot yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely so like if a person feels like approaching 30 like i am content i'm i'm proud of myself like mm -hmm. i have good habits and they're fulfilling to me the the things that i enjoy are fulfilling to me and uh then 30s are gonna be yeah smooth because a big great, a big thing yeah. from this podcast is like i also want like i want to say old people but like older people like you know compared to other people in the audience like uh -huh. like what advice can you give them like how can you help like how how can we help each other out because i mean the valley it's not austin it's not san antonio it's not that it's like we do like need to share experiences to like push ourselves forward yeah so like what kind of advice would you give like musicians whether it be or even mixers like what kind of advice could you give yeah that's that's like huge i think for musicians mm -hmm. like if you truly like this like just like pedal to the metal like challenge yourself like and don't let anybody like put you down or make you feel inferior or like if you like what you're doing and and you feel you're getting something out of it yeah. screw everybody else and that fire you feel keep feeding it like learn a more complicated <clears throat> song um you know, impress yourself as long as you're impressing yeah. yourself good things will come yeah you know and keep a level head like don't ever to <sighs> It is like a counterproductive thing <laughs> when you start feeling like, I got this. I'm very yeah. good. I've told people often, like, when you start saying, like, okay. I know what I'm doing. I've no, arrived. You don't. <laughs> yeah, like, I've arrived. I'm very good at this. Yeah. Like, that, you, that is the most dangerous place to be. You don't want to be there. Like, those words coming out of your mouth are bad. Like, yeah. I've, I've heard of some, like, very up there people in the industry who are still saying, like, I'm still waiting for my best mix oh, like, they're, i'm they're, still yeah. uh, and they've already mixed like coldplay and stuff like you know like like earlier coldplay the good coldplay, yeah <laughs> if there is good coldplay but yeah i th i feel like you should you should still be hungry like even yeah. though you're getting good like people on the outside might say like dude they're freaking phenomenal yeah as a musician or as a mixer or whatever mm -hmm. like in your mind you should kind of be a little still you should, waiting. You should never be truly satisfied because like you need yeah. to have like you need to be content with what you're doing but not like too comfortable but then I don't know. There's like a weird. Yeah, I, I get. There, you. there should still be a hunger. Yeah. Yeah, that's not satiated yet. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I get curious about that stuff. Because I mean, like, I'm like I'm 25. I mean, I'm halfway towards 30. So I'm like, yeah. What's the next part? Because I mean, age wise, I mean, you become 18, you can start, you know, smoking. You can do like you can vote and all that stuff. You hit 21, you can start drinking. Mm -hmm. But then after that, it's it's kind of like okay, your next one is 30, 35, 40. Like, there's yeah. no other like. Le leveling up age. yeah yeah in age so like i was curious about that that's a, yeah no i think it's a great question yeah for mixing engineers it's the same thing mm -hmm. like you like if you are aware of what you're signing up for ahead of time yeah. and you're like you know that there's going to be a span of time different for everybody but mm -hmm. like of sucking or just not being like you're not feeling like you're hitting the target for yourself mm -hmm. And you're okay with that then i say like just keep on cranking them out like like i still have i still remix old songs that i recorded years yeah. ago because i love to like benchmark kind of like here's what it sounded like when i mixed it in 2010 here's what it sounded like when i mixed it in yeah. 2015 here's what it sounded like when i just recently mixed it and it's so like awesome to like to see the progression AB yeah. and just be like holy sh you know like, <laughs> Yeah, and it's really it's really fun, like hearing the old stuff and being like, or hearing the new stuff and being like, "Damn, I used to be better." <laughs> like that would be worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but like, yeah, it's good to do to be doing those kinds of things mm -hmm. and just know that you're you're going to get better. Like, as as long as you like love it and you're just like running forward. Yeah. The you know the sky's the, the, the limit as corny as that sounds. No, but I mean, there's a reason why like all these sayings exist. I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's a truth to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, what kind of struggles have you gone through, like in terms of being a musician and like, well, you're mixing. Like, what kind of struggles have you gone through, like, is like personally, like, I had to scare like I think like a month ago where my computer just like it just like I don't know what happened to it. I saw that you posted uh, something. Yeah, yeah, and like 
all my files were like I basically need to do like a like a fresh restart with my computer and it basically gets rid of all your files and I didn't have a, a like a server or anything like that so like that scares me like what kind of struggles have you gone through whether it be like technical or like just like personal issues like yeah what what kind of uh, struggles have you gone through yeah that's that's a good question um like in a technical from the technical side yeah it's kind of an odd one but like really learning the sound of my rooms Mm -hmm. like room where i track most of my stuff like that there was like a really like there is still an ongoing like sort of getting like sonically acquainted like memorizing yeah in a way like it goes back to what you said about like what good sound is you know because when I started, it was like, okay, like, I have the right equipment now. I have the right microphones. And then the, it doesn't equal, like, good. Yeah. It doesn't mean, like, Because you can have the best equipment, music. but, like, if you don't know how to use it and, like, what to do with it, it's kind of like, okay, you have a, you have the equipment, but now what's, like... Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, there's more to it than just that. Like, um, so I think that was, that's, that was kind of, like, a big obstacle. Like, yeah. You have an un- if you have an unflattering room or not the most flattering room and you keep on like going balls to the wall with your like room mics and stuff mm-hmm. and you're like trying to get that to just work in your mix and you're like but it was recorded with great microphones and great so I sh- doesn't always mean you should use it it yeah. could be a very unflattering sound to the drum kit or to the whatever um, so that, that's definitely been like a technical, the, the, the technical side about yeah, it. technical sort of. What about like your like the personal like struggles you go through with all of this? Um, man, without getting too like, you don't have to get like too deep yeah, into it. But like, deep, I, like right. if you don't want Alice shirt too, like, yeah. part of me is like it's just the kind of the stress of life where, because like, I work two jobs. I mean, I work at Home Depot. I work at uh, uh, in a uh, school district as a substitute teacher. I need to balance my social life with my my family and my friends. Mm-hmm. Then I also need to balance the podcast itself, and that requires a lot. Like. People think the podcast is just me recording with you, uh-huh. but then there's a the whole background where I need to do the. Well, you're gonna help me out with the audio, so you know, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that part. Yep. But like, like I need you to handle the audio, the video, setting up booking, uh, actually driving there to the place. Mm-hmm. Um, all of that's part of it. But then there's the background where like my work with Home Depot and the school district that funds the podcast. So like it's twenty four seven. I mean there's. There's the stress involved to it, but I love it. Like I love what I'm doing, so like, it pays off overall. But like, what, like you no, know, that's what I mean. Like, what yeah. kind of struggles do you go through? Like, where like, yeah, okay, I get you now. Yeah, it's, I feel, yeah, a struggle there has been kind of not getting hung up like when I don't hit my yeah. own personal goal or target. Like, you. I, I feel like when I'm when I've recorded a band and it comes time for like the mixing and stuff mm-hmm. like I I would forego like whatever payment there's going to be for the session or for the mix mm. if like sometimes like the reaction like <coughs> if it's a good mix and like I really like hit it out of the yeah. park for them like that's enough right there like you know like I feel like so if I'm if I don't hit that and and I'm and I can sort of tell like kind of like oh like <laughs> it sounds great man thanks and I'm just like no it doesn't oh <laughs> I could do better yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's just kind of like oh like um not you know not getting hung up on things like that um and I'm not saying it like don't think like that yeah. happens often it's, and I mean and, and I'm not trying to sound like ego either but Mm -hmm. i will definitely go back and try to like work on it until i feel like okay now you're you get it out of the park or but um those those have been like definitely kind of like obstacles yeah have you had any embarrassing moments where like something just goes wrong and you're like oh no like because that's happened to me recently where like um how was it it was a couple of years last month or two months ago where it, I was barely starting off with the podcast, so, like, you know, getting these to equipment and all that stuff, like, you should you should expect failures, but, like, sometimes it just happens where, 
this musician was going to be the first person I she performed those the um for some reason my audio equipment like just messed up where like she moved the, I guess like the the wire moved and then like it, it like it sounded kind of like robotic or I don't know it was kind of weird I guess okay. the wire was messing up or something uh huh and so like she sang beautifully but because the microphone wasn't capturing it correctly like it just sounded glitchy oh, yeah. I had to use the 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 microphone from my phone because uh-huh. even I forgot my my camera too I for, uh, too uh, I forgot that too like it started messing up so I'm like okay I can only use my phone to like record the audio. And it, it wasn't flattering. I mean, like it was like it was a small studio, so I mean, it sounded kind of decent, but like it, it didn't sound like it didn't sound good. Yeah. So I was kind of embarrassed about that because I'm like, man, I wish I could have like saved this, but I yeah. mean, it happens. And then you start like self loathing, kind of like yeah, because oh, she sounded she sounded great, but oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you, or you had oh, like, yeah. some kind of? Oh yeah. <laughs> like, like if you're doing anything like audio production related, like not a question of will it it's yeah, like it's when when like it will like there there can be i i set everything up the day before i had a session and then come in the next morning and it's like none of the signals hitting the yeah computer or the desk and uh yeah i've i've like when i just renovated this the studio in 2015 mm-hmm. and there were like new pieces of equipment and new setups that i wasn't really comfortable yet with yet. yeah um I think the first session I had here was on pause for like four hours. Oh no. Like that bad. <laughs> like what do you do after like they already went and had dinner or something? And it's yeah. Just like, and it's an ugly, f- I'm sure you can, you can relate with the whole like, I'm sorry, let me say yeah, yeah. like, oh, yeah, like I, I'm a piece of shit. I hate myself. Like, yeah. <laughs> even now, like with like setting up all this equipment, like it takes me a while. Cause before it was just my laptop, my, my microphones and a camera. That was it. Yeah. Now I have lights, I have stands and I have a bunch of more equipment. So like, I look at them. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, you know, I know, I know this takes a while to <laughs> to set up everything, and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. There's no other way to do this. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. Like, even if I don't say, like, in, in my head, it's just going like, oh my god, like, I'm sorry for taking up all your time. Cause the pot is it's one thing like setting up, then one thing doing the podcast, and then to like break down everything after you leave. I mean, that's Dude, that's a lot. It's a lot. It is a lot. Like, you should just like carry a little whip with yourself and just be like, I'm yeah, sorry, forgive me. <laughs> like, that's why, like, I try to like plan it as early as I can just to like have enough time to record talk you know hang out and all stuff and then yeah break everything down and put it back to the car and take off yeah i wonder if like it's worth looking into like i don't know alternative options that make things easier for you like some solutions the only alternative option honestly would be like having my own studio like that's the only okay and like so it's permanently set up show up that's the only alternative because other than that it's just me going everywhere i mean i live in the middle of the valley luckily so like not everything's too far away but like it's still a drive over here, or Mission, or Edinburgh. What, what area are you? I live in uh, La Via, which is basically, you know where El Cauchoso is? Or? Yeah. So that area. I like. Okay. I live in a, mid, it's considered Mid Valley, but it's like the northern part of it. Is, is it like right before, uh, not far, what's the one right before far? It's uh, like, let's say like, if you go south, it would be like Westaco or Mercedes. Okay, gotcha. So like, even that, like I need to like drive towards Westaco or Mercedes just to get to the highway and then. Oh, go to okay. either, either go to McCann and Mission or go to Brownsville. I mean, that's got you, got you. So I, I guess like the alternative would be like having my own studio. So I guess I would prefer somewhere in the middle of the valley. That, that way, like anyone from Brownsville or Mission can like yeah. go towards it. But like, it's going to the point where I know I notice where most musicians are from the McCallan area. Yeah. So I'm like, how would I do this? And then one of my friends said, like, we well, might as well go to like McCallan or Edinburgh because then. Musicians from Brunswick should understand that McCallan is basically the giant hub for the valley. Absolutely, yeah. But then I'm like, I love I love making things convenient for everybody. I mean, that's honestly there's I don't there's not enough artists in the Harlingen and Brownsville area. Like they're there. Yeah, they're I'm not there. saying they don't exist. I'm, but there's not enough to like make Warrant, it worth yeah. for you to be located there. Like mm-hmm. everything would fly much easier. And like the few bands that there are in our area down here, it would easily like yeah, you know. There's no problem doing that. That's always been my struggle. So I'm like, oh my god, like, how can I make it more convenient? Is that the alarm or no? No, that's just a <laughs> okay. <specific. laughs> just making yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so that's always been my struggle. Where like, I guess the alternative solution, like you mentioned, would be like having my own studio where everything's permanently set up, and yeah. I don't have to be like, oh my god, I can just drive over there. How long would it take? It's forty minutes, thirty minutes, and then just yeah. You need to ad revenue. Start advertising. To yeah. The podcasts and then who the thing. Knows, yeah, that's what I like. For right now, the main goal for the podcast, because I talk with my friend, Nicole, she's, you know, she, we, we we understand business and money, so, like, we kind of get each other, because if I talk with, with this stuff about, like, with anybody else, like, they're going to think we're crazy. 
Yeah. So she has that craziness where like, okay, we understand each other. Or even yourself, like you you work in the technical side, so you kind of understand like the struggles, the the monetary part of it, like the financials, like so right now it's like, okay, my main goal is to like get a thousand subscribers. Cause that's when YouTubers start getting like uh sponsorships and all that stuff. Okay. Advertising. Cool. Unless I were to like look for like local businesses here in the valley that could who can help me out. I mean, that's the only Yeah. Other than that, I mean I'm on my own. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. But that that would be awesome to see. Yeah, so I, right. I mean I would hope down the line that I would it would be able to afford a studio and then go yeah. from there and help out musicians. Heck yeah. Awesome. So yeah. Cool. So <laughs> and <laughs> It's gonna take a while though, because I mean that's always on my mind. Like, how do I make money off the podcast? Because I mean, right now it's it's free. Like, I mean, I'm not charging anybody anything. I'm there's no advertising, and then I get the ca- the cost of gas right now. I'm like, mm. yeah. yeah, it's it's just there alone, and your your time editing these things on top of your other jobs. Yeah, like, yeah so it's... it becomes stressful. But like, I love doing this. I mean, I love talking with people. Because I have a mix between, like, I took in, like, the personality test. And I have a weird mix between introvert, introverted and, like, uh, extroverted. Where I don't mind hanging out with, like, small groups of people. Mm-hmm. But then, like, once it, like it, once it gets really, really big, then I get, like, tired out of it. Mm. And so, like, this podcast is perfect because I can either talk with one person like you. Or I can talk with, like, four or five people in the band. And then for me, it's a sweet spot. Like, I don't have to, like, I don't get drained out of it. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, I, I kind of enjoy this. So, I mean, for me, it's worth it in the end. Yeah, that's and I kind of have the, like I look into businesses and I think Amazon's one of the like inspirations where I know people hate 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 just Bezos and all stuff because you know, but um, because uh, money yeah money, <laughs> like, but um he has this plan where like Amazon loses money to like get more customers oh yeah so they eat up a cost but it's overall like long term it's gonna be worth it I mean that applies to everything whether it be like weight loss uh, any personal journeys uh, personal growth. It's a long, it's a long term uh, thing where anything yeah. short term, like any short term habits, I mean that's gonna fail. Like, so for me, like, it's about basically. I mean, it costs short term, but I think long term, I think the podcast could be like something great. Where, yeah, yeah. no doubt about it. Like that's that's such a good point. Like in anything you want to be good at, yeah. Like you, like, you, you have to think long term. You're not playing and, the short term game. Like, yeah, because anytime you do short term uh, stuff, like you're cutting corners, you're gonna get into bad habits. I mean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. everything worth it is long term worth like, there's always a scene about like uh, I forgot what it's called the long, like the gratification I forgot, this is a, this is a oh, word instant gratification it. yeah like where that like, like that's not a, usually a good thing where it's usually a, it's delayed gratification that's the word oh yes that, that's yes. preferred over instant because instant usually means like you know nothing instant is really good I mean instant yeah. noodles compared to like cooking stuff I mean, yeah you're so right it's like it's it's good yeah, yeah sure you get that <laughs> that quick feeling but like overall i mean that's what like drug addiction is basically like you want instant gratification yeah. like, right now rather than just delaying it i mean yeah definitely or even something simple like ca- caffeine addiction caffeine I mean. i'm so caffeinated <laughs> right now yeah yeah sugar that's why i didn't drink the coffee because i know how i get sometimes i get jittery so i'm like okay <laughs> if i add caffeine to that uh because uh. <laughs> yeah. I, I already had the issue where like my mind goes through so many different topics so like just trying to control that, I'm like okay, no, if I had caffeine, <laughs> it's not gonna go well, dude. I've, like when you got here, I was just going like, la, 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 la. <laughs> like yeah. no. What's funny is that like I'm feeling my eyes get heavy right now. I'm kind of yeah. like I'm coming at the end of the. Oh no! <laughs> Even when I got here, I was like I was already like in a panic mode because I'm like, where do I go? Because I just saw I just saw a <laughs> warehouse. I'm like, where do I park? And I was looking at the Google Maps, and it only tells you like up to like the front part. It doesn't tell you like to go in or anything like that. Yeah. So I'm like. That's why. That's why in my message I was like, "This is what it looks like." Yeah. Drive through the security and because sh- it's a lot. And I should have done that because uh, usually when I drive, I don't look at my phone. Like I, just the GPS and that's it. Like I have it mm-hmm, in the corner, mm-hmm. but I don't look. I don't like look look through messages. So I, you know, what I'm gonna park to. I'll park on the side and just like check my messages. And then <laughs> once I saw the building, I'm like, "Oh shoot!" And to like, go back through the stripes and then like I don't know some kind of weird triangle. Okay. Where did it send you? It sent me to here, but. It was like in between this place and then like the the, the following like sh- shop or whatever that business is. Okay. okay. And I'm like, okay, like how do I get to the to your area? Because I also saw like the security booth. Mm-hmm. I'm like, can I even go through there? Because I would just see like uh, tr- uh, tr- traders yeah, go through it. So I'm like, yeah. can I even go through there? I'm like, I don't surely know. I'm not allowed. <laughs> surely I'm not allowed. I mean, they're asked for my ID or something. Like, hey, are you? Do you work here? But like once I said like, oh, I'm here for like the Creative Cave Studio. Like, oh, with Adrian, right? I'm like, yeah, I think it's a guy. He just closed. (laughs) Yeah. 
And like, oh, it's a, uh, you go all the way to the back and you see uh, something with a glass. I'm like, a glass door. I'm like, what? Dude, uh, like, kind of random, but that, that just reminded me. I had a session not long ago once where yeah. they booked and I don't know how this, it, how it got this far, yeah. but they somehow misunderstood. They thought the studio was located in Houston. Oh no. And it was morning of, and I was like, Hey dude, just checking in. Like, here's the address and whatnot. And he's like, Oh, you're in Brownsville. And I was like, yeah, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> what, where else? <laughs> it's like, the Instagram says, like, right there. But, yeah. I mean, and he was like, all right, dude, uh, it's going to take me a while to get there. I'm an hour away from Houston. And I was like, oh, oh no. God, I felt so bad, dude. <laughs> like, uh, but, but at least you didn't end up in Houston. Yeah, I mean, that's a good <laughs> thing. I don't, I don't know how that even happened. I mean, you put it in Google Maps, it tells you Brownsville. I mean, For real. Like, that means the person got in the car and headed sure. out without knowing, like, I mean, oh my God. dude, it's like, but it was all good. Like, yeah. they, he ended up saying that he had family in Houston and he's like, I needed to visit them anyway. So I was like, oh, it works. works out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, I'm glad you made it here and didn't yeah. get run over by a trailer. Oh, yeah. Because I was looking around like, hmm? <laughs> yeah, no, it's the studio is located in a really weird place. But often that's how it works. Often, like I spent a little bit of time doing audio school in Tennessee mm -hmm. recently and all the major studios there are located in houses. Yeah. That's like the new model. Like Wait, in houses like like houses. Okay, houses. Okay. And what's crazy is that they're all like in the same neighborhood. It's a small city inside of a city called um Berry Hill. Yeah. And it, it's inside of Nashville, but it somehow technically it's not Nashville. Like, yeah. It has its own like zip code and mm. own police stuff like that. Yeah. I, mean, I guess kind of maybe like Port Isabel or something or something like that. But and they're all like in the same neighborhood. It's it's like you have oh, wow, that's interesting. right next to each other. And so, yeah, I don't know. Like, is there a right place for a studio? I don't I don't even know if that exists. That's <laughs> like, you know, because <coughs> the only like, places I've been to were like, like one time I had like, gone. Oh, I was trying to get a job after college at a, at a radio station. I'm not going to name it because <laughs> I, I kind of like mm, I'm like, I'm glad you guys closed down. Oh. <laughs> OK, <laughs> it's because uh, they were looking for like uh, they're hiring and. I only got that interview because my professor had connections and this lady was kind of like, she was getting pissed off at me because like I wasn't listening to her radio stations and like young people don't listen to radio, like old radios, like state radio stations. I mean, for real, maybe you'll listen to like, uh, like wild one of horror, like, How? Uh, 90 horror. but she had like a bunch of like uh, Spanish stations and she like, she kind of gave me like a, Oh, cause like I don't listen to her stations. I'm like, okay. Like, I just want a job. I mean, that's it. That is a weird... <laughs> and it wasn't even a radio job. It was, like, for the, like, the uh, account executives, like, the people who, like, who get advertising for the okay. radio stations. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I didn't need to listen to their stations. I mean, I know what they promote. I mean, I know they have mm -hmm. Spanish stations, but, like... What a funny So, yeah. Situation. So, that happened, and... Um, it's like she had a checkbox for, like, criteria for yeah. working here. And then I, once, like, I kind of realized that they needed... Like professionals, it means like they were kind of going down because they really needed the helps. Okay. So like you know what, it's a good thing I didn't get the job. And I started learning the kiss of death, where she's like, okay, like this is this place, this is this place. Here's the exit, get out. <laughs> she didn't do that, but like okay, but that's what it but felt like, like anybody who like gets tries to get like jobs in offices, like you kind of know like when you're not gonna get the job, and they they show you okay. around, but it's basically yeah. a tour to get to get to the exit. <laughs> Let me give you a tour. Let me give you a tour. Yeah, like this is, like, this is where these people work. Like. And I'm like, okay, then you know, it's, it's the kiss of death. We're like, oh yeah, we'll call you later on, but the cost never come. Uh, so, but basically, um, that place was like in a plaza. So like, they had a studio within studios in a plaza, and this is a within a, within a warehouse. I mean, I don't think there's an actual like legitimate way where place where you can have a studio. I mean, yeah, yeah, it it changes. Like. And then here in the valley, I mean, it's, it's a whole different thing. Where, I mean, where can you like find an area to have a studio? Yeah, like, like that studio I mentioned that was in Edinburgh. Sound of Rain, like mm -hmm. one of the most legit studios in the valley. It was like this, located in a warehouse. Yeah. And houses, yeah. Like, I think what could help you, like maybe like at a sign or something. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. At the same time, though, it's kind of like by appointment. So. Oh, okay. No, like, it's not necessarily something I want to, like, studio here. Like, yeah. Sort of deal. So, I kind of. Okay. Being hidden is okay. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes. But. <laughs> 
Yeah. What kind of advertising do you do for your studio? Because I mean, obviously you want bands to come here. What kind of like, because yeah. my, my, my background's in advertising, so I'm curious, like, what do you do to get bands to come here? I was just talking about that with a friend this morning, and uh, it's funny because, like, in my feed, or, like, for my Instagram for the studio, yeah. I end up somehow often with advertisements for other recording studios. And, like, how that happens, I don't know, because I'm not necessarily the, mm -hmm. the what do you call it, the audience for that. Uh, I'm also trying to get people, yeah. <laughs> like, but... It, w one, one thing that I found is that often some of them are like really cringe and even if you like got the formula right and had the best little ad yeah I feel like there's something in it that's kind of like off-putting in a way mm. like ending up in anybody's feed uninvited or like unsolicited yeah it's kind of like off-putting and so I I feel the best advertisement that's happened is word of mouth is like yeah word of mouth the is actual I actually product. disagree a little bit with you with the other one where like being uninvited, but I don't think you're un uninvited because yeah. when you get advertisement, like I know it's like it's gets it's scary because like whenever you search up you search up something or you're talking about stuff, yeah. it just shows up in it your feed. Yeah. So I mean, sometimes that's useful because like let's say like you're a band and you're like oh man like I need a recording studio, so you like search it, it up, is. yeah, it can and eventually you start getting ads. That's true. So no, I mean, that's true. Sometimes it is like it's warranted, like you know, it shows up when you need it. Yeah. Because yeah. most ads tend to be personalized. I guess, yeah, it's 50-50. It's 50-50, like, Some 50, of yeah. them are going to say, like, oh, I needed this. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. And some of them are going to be like, oh, yeah. yeah, why? Why yeah. is this here? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, you're right. And actually, I do a bit of Google, yeah. Google ads. Just making sure that, like, if Studio RGV is, like, searched, that I end up somewhere. In yeah, there. like, you, you got to find the top spots. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, for real. And uh, what I find so funny is that often, like, studios that are clearly not like paying anything in advertising are mm. taking the top spots somehow it's like Damn. zero reviews it's like <laughs> yet somehow it's at the very top yeah. but it could just be like i guess like S seo or like the search uh, search engine optimization or yeah. something like that like, yeah yeah. yeah there's some something's going on some yeah stuff. There's, there's something has to be going on on the technical <laughs> side for that to happen because yeah yeah but yeah i feel like like i say yeah a lot no i'm kidding no <laughs> that happens don't worry no, just that, um, yeah, word of mouth is very good. Yeah, that's, that's the best it's, type. It's the best one, I think. Mm -hmm. But that and, and Google, just trying yeah. trying to be. And the reason why it's considered, like, the best thing where like, it's legitimate, like, actually, the people the people you're targeting, they're the ones spreading the word, and, like, if they're talking to other bands, like, hey, like, the studio's good, they all know it's like, yeah. a legitimate thing. It's not just you throwing advertising online, and, and they yeah. just happen to, like, stumble upon it. If, if somebody like does their album here mm -hmm. and then their friends hear it and their other artists in you know their circles hear it and say who did that yeah i want you know then that's how, how do you good. how do you keep your ego in check we're like yeah i'm the one who did that oh <laughs> or sometimes you like let it go because i mean no, that's important i no, mean sometimes no, it's no. fun sometimes i mean i'm pretty sure it's kind of fun like yeah i did that no that's uh, honestly to me that's like you want you want some bad advertisement yeah go about it that way like, Frills. If you want to start going around like I did this and like it's no, no good. No, I don't mean like just like, <laughs> like I don't mean like like just saying out of nowhere like where people are talking about it, like oh like this person did this and you also you so happen to be there like oh yeah like he's the one who did it. I'm like yeah like I'm oh I get you. <laughs> well, because I mean sometimes you if, do you gotta you do gotta be proud of your work too. But yeah. I guess there's like a difference between like confident and cockiness. I think you mentioned that earlier when we were talking. Yeah. Where you want to be confident, but you also don't want to be cocky. Yeah. Definitely, that's that's a bad place to be. But I get you. I so how did it, have you ever had those moments? Sometimes where like, it's out of excitement. Yeah. Like if I hear somebody mention like a band or something, and I'm just like, oh, I know them. Yeah. Or like you know, because you you, sh you show me some of the work you did on on on, on our DMs. Yeah. Like because I forgot what band I was talking about, and you're like, oh yeah, I did work for that one. I'm like, oh shit, it's cool. <laughs> oh man, there I I I was the cocky. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I actually didn't mind because like you like satisfied like a uh, you put out the solution to the problem I had. We're like, I wonder who did this and. Okay. I mean, I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind you being confident because I mean, you should be proud of your work. There's a way. There's ways to be proud of your work, but not too cocky, I guess. Or yeah, that's true. That's true. Because if you don't have pride in your work, I'm like, so why should I go with you? I think, yeah, definitely. It's 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 too big a gamble if if like they're 
if you feel like they're falling, they don't have it together in a way. Yeah. They're kind of like doubt, self doubting. Yeah. They're, you're always doubting yourself. And that becomes a dream. We're like, oh, why should I work? Like, why should Dude, I work I'm, with you? I'm I mean, coming to you because you like, you know how to steer the ship. And yeah. You're looking at the fucking manual. You're, you're like, an unconfident ca- captain. We're like, yeah. 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 There does need to be a certain level of like vision. Yeah. I can see this through. Yeah, where I could like I, I come back, in here you know? and I, I really look at you and I'm like, okay, yes, I know what he's doing. He knows what he's doing compared to like, oh man, I don't know, like, is it, you think this is good or not? I'm like, mm. I, I guess I'll put the mic here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so how do you balance between being proud of your work but not too cocky? I guess like, I think, like, keeping your head down, like, what humbles you? You know, in your work, so, yeah. like sticking to your work and going to, back to that thing about like not really hitting the mark. Mm-hmm. Like, if if to people around you, it seems like you're hitting the mark, but to you personally, you feel like you haven't hit the target yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's up? <laughs> no, I remembered something. <laughs> What's up? I, it's because, um, this is like, it's off topic on the, in the subject, but it's it's connected. Okay. So basically, my friends and I were like, uh, we would play Super Smash Bros. a lot, and I was considered the best one. So I'm like, okay. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't say like, oh, I'm the best one, but like, I was, between us, I was the best one. Uh-huh. So, uh, in summer, there was a thing called the South Texas uh, Gamers Expo in McKellen. Yes, yeah. So I, I went to it. competed in a Smash there. Yeah, that's what happened. I, I joined the, the tournament. Like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I might, do, I might do decent. You know, a couple of rounds, I'll survive. And then I'll get off probably, I'll get off early. Anyways. So, I go to it. I start playing. I'm instantly out within the first <laughs> round. <laughs> that's awesome. And it's so sad because, like, <laughs> for some reason, I had, like, a small fan base. I don't even know who these people were, but, like, I had, like, a Mario cap and everything. And... They were like They're cheering me on Like oh god he's, This guy's gonna do it He's gonna do well And my friends were like Cheering me on <laughs> Within the first round I like Eliminated It's <laughs> <laughs> so good So I'm like And I, I kind of hated it Cause like I had like all these nerds Like yelling at me Like you gotta do this You gotta do this I'm like I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> And so like That kind of like Humbled me I'm like okay I'm imagining like The Mario hat Yeah <laughs> And I'm okay, like, okay, I'm good with my friends, but I'm not nowhere near good. Anybody else where, like, people who take this seriously, like, I'm, I'm nowhere near them. <laughs> so, like, when you were saying that, I'm like, yeah, like, uh, I know what you're talking about. Do you ever do, like, thumbnails for the podcast? Yeah. Can you please make it, like, a photo of you in the Mario? Like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'll see if I can find it. <laughs> I have it somewhere in my house, but I don't know where. Uh, which Smash was it, bro? Uh, yeah, at that time, it, 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 yeah, it was bro, because... Yeah, because I was I was thinking bra would be easier because like supposedly the the physics is more floatier, so like it's lower. So I I think I could handle that compared to ultimate. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll do bra. I mean, it should be easy. A lot of, a lot of people hate that game, so like maybe less people to deal with. And nah. I feel like it required more. Like you couldn't just like trigger happy it like with the like what do you call those those the the, the, the attacks that are like yeah. the harder ones like melee was really like you could melee's really technical really fast and a yeah. lot of people enjoy, yeah that's the one that everybody's like goes towards in, in the competitive scene if you didn't have blocking down well like yeah. like second nature like you would suck at brawl i think like you yeah. had to have the that yeah and that person the technique. person i went against i went against like was like in the top 10 so i wasn't aware of that person oh my like, god like oh, whatever like they, they know each other the community knows each other i was just like some random guy like yeah let me tr- let me get a shot if i win something oh, cool whatever not but i'm like oh shit like this guy was actually really good what so, are like, the the game rules that they play usually is it like stock like live uh, yeah it's stock three okay. uh three three lives and like i think it's like best two out of three i think that's what they had there cool cool and while well, like i lost the first round and, I, and I, in the second round, I was doing much better. I'm like, okay, I might have a chance. And he kills me. And I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> there goes that. You know and then the crowd just like went away. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> oh, man. I was just there with, my, yeah, I was there with my friends. But I mean, I deserve that because I'm like, I thought like, oh, maybe I can do something. I mean, maybe yeah. I can do well. And so I understood like, you know what? With my friends, I'm <laughs> good. <laughs> in terms of like the actual community, I'm nowhere near them. And, and I mean, it's good to have those humbling experiences. Yeah. Hell yeah. So that's what I was wondering. Like, if you ever had one of those moments where like, you're in your stride, you're doing well, and then something just happens, you're like, oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah, like like I was saying about like getting the interface and being like, this sounds amazing, and then yeah. like putting on the, your favorite band and being like, I suck. <laughs> or like, yeah, it still happens often. Like, you can be in here like working on a mix or wherever you're at, working on something, and then like hearing something commercial and just being like, end, no. end me, please. Like, I, I have no future in this. <laughs> <laughs> but... Yeah, that that's a good thing to keep you in check. Mm-hmm. Like keeping yourself in check, or sometimes like life will find a way to yeah to humble you. And, yeah, yeah. And sometimes you you do need it. I mean, definitely it keeps you in check. Absolutely. Um, 
in terms of uh, projects, you don't have to name people because I don't want you to like burn bridges or like oh this was better. What um what makes a good like session in terms of recording audio like w- with a band like what makes a good session versus a bad session where like everything goes wrong or maybe it doesn't go as expected or I don't know like what makes something good. I think when they come in when the band comes in with a like semi realized idea. Yeah. Like if it's fully realized even better, but I understand that we're all like working other jobs and mm-hmm. busy and like it's not like we're in Nashville or LA and like music is our main source of income. Yeah. So I feel like the some of the worst sessions have been when like the idea is hardly even stitched together. Like shit can go south yeah. really fast. And Oof. to top it off, if they have an idea that's sort of formulated and there's something in there's it, some, something somewhat good, of a foundation. Yeah. Yes. And then if they have like a willingness to be a little uncomfortable, you mm-hmm. know, with um, not knowing the end outcome or where this is going to go. And you're OK with writing it out together because it's one thing I enjoy a lot is that it's a, you're sharing like the experience with each other like i'm i don't know where i mean i I do know where this is going but i couldn't tell you exactly like this is how it's gonna sound when it's all put together all all we can do is like keep our eye on each each instrument as we're recording it and whatnot and hopefully good ideas are coming along the way oh what if you did what if you played it this way and what if like uh and you're like yeah, so having having a a pretty good idea already, kind of knowing where you want to end up in a way, yeah, loosely, with enough room for spontaneous things to happen, I think that breeds some of the best, the, the, best. the better sessions. Yeah, I think you kind of mentioned the um, the issue of like money. How does that play in turn like in turn your job? Because I notice a lot of musicians, no one is making income just living solely off their music. I mean, people yeah. have other jobs. How has it affected you? Like, yeah, I mean, I, I, if this could be my full time job one day, that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I do work other jobs too, and but at the same time, I, I make myself like as available as I possibly can for this mm-hmm. one, because, like, this, not like I, I don't know how to put this like. But like this, I'm, I do this because I really, really love it. I really do. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't, if it, one day it could pay all my bills, that would be awesome. Uh, but, you know, like, I, I, I do other things on the side too. So yeah. just just like everybody, like we're all <coughs> trying to. Yeah, because that's what I found really unfortunate where like, I was talking to musicians and I'm like, okay, like some of you guys aren't even like making that much money off um, your music and some people like end up quitting because I mean like what's the point? Some yeah. people like they'll keep it like as a hobby or anything, like just to have it on the side, just to like yeah. you know have fun. But like some people are, like you know what this is not gonna, this is not something long term here in the valley. Yeah. And some and I'm like oh my god like that's un- that's unfortunate. And then some are like, um, this is friend I have where like he doesn't get that many gigs here in the valley and like he doesn't get treated well. But then like he goes to Austin, San Antonio, and like over there they get treated like really really well. Yeah. They'll pay for your hotels and everything. I'm like yeah. What is the valley lacking that, like, it's not really, like, I guess, support of towards musicians? Do you know what that is? Because, I mean, I think you would have a little bit more, like, insight into that because, I mean, you work with a, a couple of bands, I'm pretty sure. Well, in those cases, like, the Nashvilles and the Austins, like, yeah. the actual music capitals and stuff, like, I feel what what allows it to, to operate in that way is there's an audience for mm-hmm. it. And... There's an audience here too, but the demographic is a bit different. Oh, there's the alarm. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep this as the last question, I guess. No, no. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like, in those cases, like, you might have... And the venues have a lot to do with it too. And, and mm-hmm. McCann is doing a great job, like, the downtown area. Yeah. Of, like, you know, making it a place to be on your Friday night, on your Saturday night, on your... Um, the shows that go on there. I think, like, definitely it it, it's it's gonna end up there at some point yeah hopefully and then it's kind of like 
doing like venue uh, owners and stuff like how they see musicians too yeah okay that does, that does tend to be an issue like i mean i talk with some of them where mm-hmm. they only see musicians as like background noise not really like yeah like entertainment as like yeah 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 it it comes with the territory there too because if you had like a bar owner that say was a musician and knows what it's like to haul yeah, your gear all around yeah. and practice and dedicate yourself to it then they might be like dude you bring in a good crowd they mm-hmm. buy lots of drinks all night long um you know i'm gonna you take care you're taking care of me so i'm gonna take, take care, care of you, of you. And, yeah. and then that goes deeper it's like not necessarily a question of are are the external things like venues and stuff and audience in place it's just kind of like are there good people doing business with good people or treating people yeah. like well you know it's like i guess it's a little deeper than that but no that makes sense yeah because i've seen like i've seen like the the good parts and the bad parts of being a musician here i'm like oh my god like yeah if you if you're doing it here it's it's because it's like it's, it's kind of the, clearly the theme it's, of it's everything clearly, today yeah it's you, clearly out of passion yeah you, of passion, don't, you, yeah, you don't have that i mean yeah definitely but um yeah i definitely i think stuff is is what could the value do better in your opinion because i mean you already had experience with other like actual music capitals what mm-hmm. could the value do better Mm, I love the shows that are that you know that um, that have been going down like uh, I recently the Gold, Girl Ultra one recently mm-hmm. um, oh you were there yeah oh yeah the I, one, was, I was there yeah <laughs> yeah the one before it yeah uh, I hope I don't get in trouble but like I only went to see like Lost in Dumbo yeah yeah cause they're the they're ones awesome. like yeah cause like um, I wanna see like belly bands their music is legit yeah their, their music is good I'm like and I, I was talking a little bit with them cause I wanna get them on the podcast uh-huh. and I'm like like I'm not saying this just cause I wanna see you guys but like I honestly I only went to see you guys and then me and my friend went out to eat <laughs> you missed out though girl it's just so good I, I yeah. I'm sorry or do you, unless you don't like it I don't know no, no I haven't listened to the music I don't know who the big band the, okay. like, the big bands were mm-hmm. and I'm like you know what like, I'm, I'm just here to to see Lost in Limbo and I'm taking off <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and right before that, I think I went to Cursive and Thursday, which was like sort of a throwback emo show. And I, I heard of them. I didn't get to see that one, but like, yeah. You know. I think I think everything's like falling into place. Yeah, there's um, there's some promoters that are doing a good I don't job. Know a whole lot of this the the background, the story of like you know like people not treating people right or anything like that. Yeah, if that is happening at all. But um, no, I think things are things are as long as like there's hungry artists. Yeah. You know, for me like, it's because like i'm it. getting kind of involved and i talk with a lot of people so i kind of get like all the news whatever i don't choose sides or anything like that but like mm-hmm. i find it interesting because i mean it's not just musicians it also happens with comedians where people have like their own little clicks mm-hmm. and to me i find it really interesting because the valley again it's not austin it's not dallas i don't think it could have been afford like everybody had been in their own little their own little circles i mean yeah i would think you know everybody would be trying to be united to push the valley forward but uh, it's not the case yeah that that's unfortunate in my, in my mind it's always been like the valley as a whole yeah and then even and at anytime that, like, there's like crap about like this city and like that city and just kind of like uh, i'm just like dude yeah to me so, to me it's unfortunate wasting then, your your breath like <laughs> like <coughs> collectively we're a blip to everyone we're nothing so exactly. it's just like it, it's just wasted uh, yeah argument, you know that's what like i thought like you know there would be more unity you know like hey you know we're the valley we're 956 yeah you know? there's only more to gain if we think collectively yeah but you know uh, i guess that's not the case <laughs> <laughs> not the case for everybody I guess. But. yeah so i mean yeah, yeah i heard the alarm ring so we can wrap it up if you want sure so yeah. the the final question i usually ask my ghost is my ghosts <laughs> my guests is um what was your favorite part of the podcast favorite part of the podcast i really enjoyed um the like while we were just setting up like mm-hmm. kind of just talking uh, like yeah. there was like a quick speed catch up like I don't know you that well yet, but mm-hmm. I felt like by the time we started talking yeah. the podcast, it was kind of like, okay, I kind of okay. know his background yeah. or like, you know, uh, what he's into musically. Yeah, and, and I'm and always open. I mean, I don't really hide stuff. I mean, I, I yeah. like I like to make people feel, I want to try to make the podcast as convenient as possible with the, with the, with the setup and then like also with with the conversations make it make you feel comfortable where that's awesome because um i know i look like an angry person i mean my, i do i know i don't get you that know, you, don't, you don't have to say you don't have to be nice i really I don't get that but because like anytime like i like 
talk with people like or like, when they first meet me like oh I thought you were angry because even like my sister's friends when they came over for like a sleepover um, they looked at me they thought like I was angry the whole time <laughs> and and my sister was like no like that's how he looks like and even at Home Depot it happens where customers they I help them lo- I'm a lot loader I help them load up uh, yeah. stuff into the cars or like pick up carts and all stuff and it, there was this customer who's complaining to my manager saying like hey this person helped me out but they looked mad and I'm like I'm not mad I, like, I just I just had like that what they call like the bitch face or whatever <laughs> so I'm like I need to like make you guys comfortable so you understand like hey he looks mad but he's actually a cool person that's so cool dude I'm gonna get you a shirt that says I'm not mad I'm not like, mad yeah really and that back. happens and my manager explains to them like no like that's how he, that's how he looks like <laughs> You should, like, before they even ask you a question, just be like, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I just look like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry you've experienced that. I'm okay with it. I have already accepted that. I mean, I've gone through it multiple <laughs> times, so I'm, I'm perfectly it. fine. So that's why whenever I have, like, people on, on a podcast and I actually meet them in person, I'm like, I try to, you know, small talk just to get people, okay. Like, hey, yeah. He's not angry. He's not mad. I did. What's funny is I, I actually got the opposite more because I was reading, like, sub, sub context, sort of. Yeah. Like, See, like seeing the types of posts that you would put or like the captions in your photos I was like oh this seems like a very humble person or a very down to earth see but very- you had that experience where you're reading my content if it was just me you meeting in person just without without that context I mean uh, I think it would be let's different let's do a quick okay I'm gonna ask you like <laughs> you, you work at Home Depot right now yeah. right yeah uh, excuse me sir where's the lumber uh, so honestly uh, oh, it would be like it's, it's, it's in the back but like Right now, this considered out of context and everything, so it's kind of weird. But like, it's just that. Um, let me show you. I can do it real quick. <clears throat> My natural face. Excuse me, sir. Where's the lumber? So like, like I'm already like I already look mad, and people are like, oh, I'm a, I'm a bit confused. <laughs> like, is um, he gonna? The lumber is towards the back where the Russians are. You'll see a giant sign, and it's over there. And some people <laughs> don't hit me, please. <laughs> and also, like, I wear a cap there too, like for the sun, because I work outside. So yeah. like, I mean, like for the people, I mean, I'm sure you can see in the podcast or like in the camera, but like. Right here, like, I have, like, a sun, like, a tan. Because I, I work in the sun, I mean... Yeah. It's tough out there. Like, this podcast is basically out of my, my sweat, blood, and tears. I mean, literally... That's awesome, man. But, like, I mean, it's... So it's yeah, but, um... I look mad because I wear, like, a cap, so it makes it worse because the shadow, like, reaches my eyes. So you're, like... So, <laughs> or sometimes, like, the sun's in my eyes, so I'm, like, even more pissed off. I'm, like, I'm not pissed off. It's, <laughs> I look like this, and then the sun or the shades <laughs> makes it worse. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm glad you said that, like, you know... They get the context from my Instagram post where you know he seems yeah. a humble person. Where I was like, he seems like a really yeah, I'm, I'm a gentle giant. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what I would consider a gentle giant. But when I do get pissed off, then yes, I will be pissed off. I mean, oh, that's right. how it is. But I, I, I usually control my temper for the most part because I guess part of it is a personal thing where like I don't want to be like my dad. But then like because of that, like sometimes I do become like him. But I mean, it's it's a temperament thing. But I, I for, for the most part, I control myself. I don't. I learned from the mistakes and then that's good so I'm glad that you got the context where like hey you know he's a, mo- he's a humble person it's, so it, you don't have to worry about me being, looking mad or <laughs> it's it's not a mistake what's it saying if, if you learn something from it yeah there's not a mistake so well, that's that's cool man so yeah so I appreciate that, that you know you were able to actually like you actually decided to like be part of it because sometimes I mean there's issues where like it's hard to get the schedule right with people oh no dude like I I so happy that you mm-hmm. you asked me to do it like i that was so cool I yeah happy so happy to do it what made you out of curiosity this is more of a personal thing but like what made you follow me like what made you like i don't remember how it happened to be honest Cause it, it was a while back because you were one of like you were like one of the first people more or less so i'm like i'm surprised because i hadn't i didn't have that many like followers at that time so i'm like what made this person follow me that's odd yeah i don't know i think it sometimes like there's suggested people to follow yeah I must have seen something in your bio or something oh, okay. related to music or something. And yeah. I try to keep the studio page, like, sort of just, like, ne- not networking, but sort of connected with, yeah. like, other local studios or other local artists and things like that. So, it, yeah. I want to say it. You probably, you, yeah, you might have seen, like, someone I was talking with and then, yeah. Yeah, like, oh, okay, this guy yeah. is into music or something. But I want to say it was something. Yeah. Like yeah, because yeah. to me it means a lot more when, you're, when I'm starting off because then, like, I know this person wanted to follow me. Oh. And I just like, oh, okay, he's been talking with all these musicians now. Sure, it's, it's easier to jump when you, once you're like successful. Yeah, it's easier for people to jump on your bandwagon compared to like when you're first starting off. Cause yeah, yeah, I get you. Big yeah, time. but so no, I appreciate yeah. you. I appreciate you being on here and doing, doing all of this. I mean, I, even a, with the audio stuff, I mean that's no, that's a huge load off my my backs. Good, 
I'm 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 happy to help. Yeah. Definitely. Uh it's 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 what I do here every day, so mm -hmm. So if it sounds really good, it's this guy. It's <laughs> it's not me. If it sounds really bad. If it sounds really bad, it then... wasn't me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm messing. Uh but no, I think it's really cool what you do and there's there's probably more people doing it. I'm not Aware. There's only like two ear. other, I think, two other people. But other than that, it's then it's, even cooler, man. That you're, you know, yeah. I want that, that first move this. advantage. <laughs> yeah. Heck yes, dude. Like I'm, I'm excited to you know listen to more podcasts that you do. I appreciate or it. More artists that you get in here. Or, same for you. Like I want to like I want like I want to look more into your work. Like what you would, would you have done and what do you plan to do in the future? I mean, I would love to see all yeah. of that as as you go on. Yeah, dude. Um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you guys. Oh, <laughs> you can continue. Finish that was your it. Just okay. Um. <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening, and I'll see you guys for the next one.